left. It's kicked aside by Bjorn. He backs the rebound away. Kevin Lowe, number four, was tied up by Sear. Over in the corner goes Dave Hunter. And clears the zone. This will be an icing as Dykstra gets to it first, and he does. Well, the Sabres are using Doug Smith to play against Wayne Gretzky, and there's no team in the National Hockey League that just leaves it up to chance. And in certain games, certain teams will just put whatever line is up next to go out against the, whichever line the opposition puts out. Well, when Wayne Gretzky is on the ice, there is a designated line, a designated centerman, more specifically, that plays against him. And it's recently acquired Doug Smith of the Sabres. He came over from the Los Angeles Kings, and I'm sure he's wondering what he has to do to get in an offensive line. He was a prolific scorer in junior, but in Los Angeles, he played behind Marcel right. Dion and Bernie Nichols, neither of whom could be called upon to check. And uh, it's a credit to Doug Smith that he has just put his nose to the grindstone and done the job that has been asked of him, in spite of the fact that he's not a natural checker. He's more of a scorer. We'll get it out of the zone, sent back in by Polino, but the Oilers come back. Here's Messier across the line against Dykstra. They dropped to Curry for a shot blocked by Dykstra. Curry along the boards, lost it to Sear. Now here's Doug Smith. Smith makes the move, drops it off for Sear. Sear's shot is blocked by Lee Fogelin. Fogelin started his NHL career here in Buffalo. Talking about your defensive defense, but Fogelin is like perfect example. He turned 31 on Friday. I think he's becoming even more defensive with, <laughs> defensive minded with age. Of course, that's something as the legs go, you have to rely on the brain. And defensemen can do that. They don't need the legs that fall in this. So Gretzky set it up so nicely. Doug Smith, one-on-one -on -one with Paul Coffey. The shot. Good. No, it hit the post. It hit the post. It had a beat. It looked like he was going in, loose in front. But it banged off the post and came out. Shoot, save by Pure. The rebound, another save by Pure. Doug Smith with two chances. One hits the post and Pure stops him. 2.15 to go in the second period. Coffee with a move. It's blocked in front. Ramsey blocks another one. Nice block by Ramsey. You mentioned that that was his strength, and he blocked it again. This is playing a fine game. Watch this shot by Smith. Let's see. This one bangs off the post. Well, he moves here to Coffey. I think it's Coffey that's back. Moves here to his right, or to Steve Smith. He winds up and lets it go. And it came within a couple of inches of actually going in the net. From here, it looked as if it may have, may have gone in, but it bounced down, and we could see that it didn't. But he's getting all kinds of ice time and is really responding to the, the challenge of being traded after requesting a trade in Los Angeles. Scotty Bowman is giving him all the ice time he can handle. He's killing penalties, playing the power play, and playing against Gretzky's line. Well, it's an interesting story. Scotty Bowman said he had wanted to draft Doug Smith in 1981 and traded uh, Richard Martin to the L.A. Kings uh, for a number one draft pick, and he would have used uh, that second number one to draft Doug Smith. Uh, what it turned out was that uh, Richard Martin was hurt, and uh, they had to wound up giving one of those draft picks back and uh, taking a 1983 pick, I believe it was, and Barrasso uh, eventually turned out to be the pick. Not a bad pick. <laughs> In 81. Underway. Avish has really gotten his life back together again. He has. I'm happy to see it. I'm sure he has a different perspective about a lot of things in life, but his attitude seems sound, and he he definitely paid a, a price for a, an indiscretion that could have happened to a lot of other people. Unfortunately, it happened to Craig McTavish, but it's nice to see him back in the NHL doing what he wants to do most, and that is play in the National Hockey League. And playing well for the Edmonton Oilers. Teams are back in full strength. Buffalo now one for four on the power play. The puck comes to Doug Smith. He's in all alone. Smith drops it off. They score! Polino! Mike Polino, the leading goal scorer of the Buffalo Sabres, ties it at 2-2. Doug Smith making the unselfish play. Could have shot himself. Instead decided to slip it over to Polino. The sign of a true team player. When you have the chance to put it in yourself and decide to set up a teammate who is in slightly better position, Polino just put it up over Pure's left shoulder. And I'm sure that's as good as a goal to Doug Smith right now, as long as his team scored when he had that goal post hit that we showed you a few times, but they're right back in. It's 2-2. You know Polino is saying thank you. Mike Polino gets the goal, is 29th from Smith and Dykstra. That shot is high and off the glass. With over two minutes gone by in the third period. 
Gretzky trying to come out of the year. Bill Clement. So the last thing they would like is overtime. Well, I imagine they're getting pretty tired, Jim, right about now. They've had a number of games lately. But uh, they're the kind of guys that, you know, champions rise to the occasion. And I'm sure they would rather walk out of here with two points right now, but the score nevertheless is tied two to two. And although they would rather have the rest, there's not one player on the team thinking that right now. They are uh, champions all the way, and I think if they play overtime, you'll see a, a typical championship team in overtime. Sear trying to dump it behind the net. It was blocked, worked up the boards. Ramsey keeps it in. Polino with a shot just wide. Gretzky trying to clear, intercepted, Doug Smith with a shot, saved by Fuhr. Coffey lifts it out, knocked down, good play by Ramsey. Ramsey to Foligno, Sears in front, Smith trying to get it in front, it's still loose, Foligno, score! Doug Smith! a look at it. It all started with Paul Coffey trying to dump the puck out of the zone and having it stopped at the blue line. Polino makes a beautiful feed to Doug Smith who only gets a piece of it. You can see that Grant Fuhr anticipated the puck coming further to his left, had his left leg stretched way out and that let Doug Smith actually slip it between his legs. I think Fuhr probably anticipated the shot coming from far over to the left. Smith was closer than he had anticipated. And big work by Mike Polino and Doug Smith. Doug Smith has just had a, a fabulous game for a kid that's had a lot of ice time, wanted to get out of Los Angeles, is now in Buffalo, getting more ice time than he can handle almost, but rising to the occasion here in the third period, that puts the Sabres ahead by one. It's three to two with only a minute and 47 seconds to go in the game. Smith with an assist on the tire. Scoring the go-ahead goal, his second goal as a Buffalo Sabre in five games. Perot, nice move, but Greg gets back to break it up. A minute and a half to go in regulation time. 3-2 Buffalo. Sabres looking for their fifth win in a row. Perot against Coffey. Coffey tying him up. Perot trying to shield him off. Gretzky goes over to knock it loose to Hunter. 1.15 to go. Now we'll watch Grant Fuhr to see when he heads to the bench for an extra skater. Curry shot gloved by Cloutier. Fuhr has gone to the bench. But a whistle stops play. They'll get a face off. It was offside. It was an offside pass on the play, bringing it out to the red line. I actually think it might be that the Edmonton player replacing Fuhr jumped, hit on, the ice jumped on the ice too soon. So they bring the they actually bring the face off back to the center ice area, which will hurt the Oilers. There's a guy you know will be on the ice. They're called uh, timeout. A penalty shot for Edmonton. We are being told has been called. We haven't heard it ourselves. No, I at all. Is that right? The goaltender went to the bench too early. They brought the faceoff yeah. out to center the face ice. The faceoff goes to center goal. ice. And they could, then Edmonton called the timeout. I'm kind of disappointed. I wouldn't <laughs> mind have seen a penalty shot. It's the single most exciting thing in sports, I think, that one-on-one -on -one confrontation. One, 108 to go in regulation time. Tapped into the Edmonton zone. There's Pure with one minute left in regulation time. He will try to get to the bench. He's skating out of the crease as the Oilers come forward, but Polino breaks it up. 50 seconds to go in regulation time. 3 2 Buffalo. Messier holds. Now the Oilers come ahead. Coffee on the rush. Pure to the bench. Coffee behind the net centers its block. 40 seconds to go. S centered in front. Anderson fanned on the shot. Polino to Smith. Empty net for Edmonton. Smith across the line. His shot is blocked. Smith gets it back. Centers and it's blocked by Anderson. 25 seconds to go. Coffey picks up the puck. 20 seconds to go as Messier takes it in. Drops it around the boards. Stopped by Cloutier with 15 seconds. Around the glass. It's kept in by Lowe. Knocked out by Smith. 10 seconds to go. Smith comes in. Smith.
What a night for Doug Smith. You see Crucial Niski pulling him off balance, but not enough. He gets the puck up into the empty net. In spite of the fact that he'd been on the ice and made an end-to-end -end rush only seconds before that, he still had the strength and the conditioning to outrace a fresh Mike Crucial Niski all the way down the ice. And Sam, I guess you could say he's had a scrapbook kind of night tonight. You know, it's unforgettable. Doug Smith assisting on the tying goal early at 1.49 of the third. This one is all over. He was given the assignment to check Wayne Gretzky's line and not only did that, but ended up being the scoring hero as well. Kind of a two-fold victory for Doug Smith and the second consecutive time that the Sabres have knocked off the champion Oilers this year. Fifth win in a row for the Buffalo Sabres. Jacques Cloutier makes 19 saves in a solid effort in goal. And the Buffalo Sabres, led by their newly acquired center, Doug Smith, who scored two goals and ass assisted on another, defeat the Edmonton Oilers 4-2. The Sabres have won five in a row. They're now tied with Boston for third place in the Adams Division. We'll be back at the Odd in Buffalo in just a moment. Gonna love Final comments now from Sam Rosen and Bill Clement. Thank you, Jim. A good game for Jacques Cloutier, but what a game for Doug Smith. We can't say enough about the young man from Ottawa who comes uh, from Los Angeles in the train and really was explosive tonight. Well, as we mentioned, he basically was given the task of keeping Wayne Gretzky off the scoreboard. He was matched up against Wayne Gretzky's eye. Well, not only did he do that, he ended up with two goals and an assist, was the first star of the game, and, and had a kind of a scrapbook evening. You know, he'll be able to get the newspapers tomorrow morning and cut out some really nice thing for his scrapbook. It's interesting. Uh, we talked about it before. Here's a guy who really wanted to trade. A lot of guys get traded, and they're disappointed, they're upset, they're shocked, but uh, he wanted this trade, and he's very happy about being here. Well, I think he felt that he wasn't being put in the offensive situations in Los Angeles. As we mentioned during the game, he was playing behind Marcel Dion, who's one of the great offensive players of all time, and Bernie Nichols, who's an offensive threat, and wasn't playing any power play. Well, here tonight, it looked as if he was being thrust into a defensive situation, which he was against Gretzky, but when they had a power play, Scotty Bowman played him on that, and he also killed penalty. So I think his prayers have been answered. He's getting all the ice time he can handle right now. And for Wayne Gretzky, people have to be talking. Seven games now without a goal for Wayne Gretzky. Well, for mere mortals, that's not a very long time, but he has just equaled the longest streak he's ever been through without scoring a goal, and that was the, the original streak of seven games was back in his rookie season when he wasn't as prolific as he is now. So I'm sure the Oilers are going to be shaking their heads and taking a real close look at what's going on. They really have to keep that momentum going towards the end of the season, and I really felt, I don't know if you did, that having lost last night in Washington after a seven-game... GRZ Stereo TV. We're in the first intermission here in Hartford. The Sabres with a 3-0 lead over the Hartford Whalers. Last January 30th, Scotty Bowman acquired Doug Smith from the Los Angeles Kings. It didn't take Doug long to make his presence felt in a Buffalo Sabres uniform. He scored 13 seconds after the opening faceoff against the New York Rangers. Played in Montreal and Washington. England sends it to the far side. Gives it to Mike Ramsey. Edgar Paul Sear. He sends away. Smith takes the shot. He scores! And here is Doug Smith, and Doug, I, like we were just saying, I think you can still live off that one for a while, but I'm sure you'd like to get another one here before long. You did pick up an assist in that first period. Yeah, you know, everybody, uh, everybody's everybody been talking a lot about that goal, you know, and it was really nice. It uh, took a lot of the pressure off, and, it, you know, it, it makes things a lot easier, I guess. Uh, I'd like to get a couple more. I'm working real hard, and uh, it's just good to see the team winning, you know, on a consistent basis here. Are you getting a little more accustomed to, to playing in the new uniform now? Uh, obviously you would be, but I mean, is it still uh, difficult in, in a lot of ways? Well, you know, I try and go out there and I try and work as hard as I can, but uh, the big thing with this division is the small rinks. Uh, Hartford, you know, has, has a bigger rink, but all the other teams, you know, uh, in, in Montreal and, uh, you know, Boston, of course, and in Buffalo, it's a small rink. It's a different type of game. It's, uh, it's a lot closer checking and, uh, you know, you have to be uh, quick on your feet. You can't just take the long strides. I have to, I have to change my game a little bit. Well, maybe you can be a little more specific about how you have to change your game. Does it also change it uh, defensively as yeah, well? Yeah, defensively too. You know, you have to be you have to be right with your man. You know, you don't have that much space. Uh, the puck comes to somebody in your own end, and you know it's only a short distance from the goal. You have to be right on top, and and of course the other teams are right on top of you. 
Hartford Whalers are a team that obviously very much improved. There are those who think maybe they're not physical enough. Do you go in with the with the idea of playing a physical game against them? They they don't have a lot of the big tough wingers that maybe some of the other teams in the Adams division do. Well, I, uh, from playing Hartford in L.A. for the last uh, last four years, you know, I don't remember them being a non-physical team. They come out playing hard and. Uh, they, they beat us in L.A. not too long ago by, uh, I think it was 9-1, nine, nine and we beat them here 9-1. But, uh, you know, I think they play a good game, a good solid game, and they're a much improved team. You know, uh, Ron Francis being out hurts them a little bit, but, uh, you know, they've, they've come a long way, and, and I can't see them uh, being in this slump for very long because they're a solid team. Well, you know, it's uh, incredible the way the momentum shifts back and forth the game. You look at this one, the Sabres are ahead 3 nothing, but if Tommy doesn't come up with some big saves, it could well be a different story. Yeah, watching Tom Barrasso from, uh, from a Buffalo Sabres uniform, you know, is a different story. I've really been watching him the last few games, and, uh, you know, he's an unbelievable goalie. It's, uh, you know, it's amazing how fast he is for a big man, and, and tonight especially he's come through big, and he's the first star of the uh, first period. Doug, most uh, athletes would just give their eye teeth to play in Los Angeles. You've got the great weather and uh, all this, but it's kind of tough when you have the Dodgers and the Lakers and the Raiders and the Rams, and they're all successful, and that makes it tough if you're a hockey player, doesn't it? Well, you know, the hockey fans out there are uh, true fans, but right now I think there's only about six or 7,000 of them. You know, they, uh, the team has been un inconsistent, winning one season, losing another season, and, uh, you know, you have to have a winning team to, to draw the people. It's proven in Pittsburgh they're winning more, they're getting more people. Uh, you know, the Los Angeles fans are, are good, the, the solid ones that we have, but to get the building full, you have, to, uh, you have to play a consistently good game and win some at home. Was it a little tougher to concentrate on hockey when it's uh, 75, 80 degrees outside? No, I think during the hockey season, uh, you're you're pretty well hockey oriented no matter you grew up in playing hockey all year you, you know you go to practice every day um, you know it, it takes a little bit more concentration because of the travel we travel three times as much as uh, most of these eastern teams but uh, you know if you want to adjust to it uh, I don't think there, there's any problem for guys you got Marcel Dion out there and Bernie Nichols and Dave Taylor I mean a lot of solid hockey players out there and uh, you know it doesn't bother them, bother them at all all right, Doug, welcome to Buffalo, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks very much. Doug Smith, our intermission guest, Sabres with a 3-0 lead. Our intermission will continue in just a moment. See how to make the years melt away on PM Magazine's Staying Young Week. At 45, Raquel Welch is sexier than ever. Discover what keeps her fit and fabulous. And get... lost the night before in overtime in Washington and end up losing another one. This a power play goal. Felino to Housley. Nice pass back the other way. Grant Fear didn't stand a chance as John Tucker put home his 24th goal of the season. You see the nice pass here by Housley. And uh, things were all tied up. But then the Oilers would go to work on the power play. And this is a patented play for Edmondson as they work it behind the net to who else? Wayne Gretzky. He gets it in front to Curry, who just bangs it past Kluche. He's not going to miss from that close. Uh, but the Sabres would come back and tie it in the third as Doug Smith took over. Look at the nifty drop pass right here. Felino trailing the play. Good hustle. He scores right there as 29th of the season. Felino just having a standout year. Then it would be Felino returning the favor to Smith who scores right there, and he then scored into an empty net. And after the game, a 4-2 win for the Sabres. Doug Smith was pretty happy about it. I yelled down the bench to the, to the guys. I yelled down. I said, geez, let's win this in regulation because, uh, you know, we're tired. It's been three games and four nights. I just wanted to get this over with, and the next shift, you know. It was brought respectability back to the phrase. Here's Doug Smith. Well, Bob, as you asked last week, is this town big enough for two Doug Smiths? And after last night's Sabres victory over Edmonton, I did sort of wonder. Have you ever thought that Doug Smith was a name that you had to overcome? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, I think it's I think it's a great name. I, I think there's a few others out there with the same one. But out in Los Angeles, hardly anybody knew who he was. The hockey isn't isn't the biggest deal in L.A. It's uh, you know it's probably fifth among sports. There's the Dodger. But let's face it, he's a threat. I never figured to be Buffalo's best, but I may not even be Buffalo's best Doug Smith. The team's on a high, and I caught the team while, uh, of course, they started winning. Uh, and, and I got lucky and got a, an early goal. And Now, another thing about this Doug Smith is he scored when he'd been in town for only 13 seconds. Took me about 13 years. And I'm married. We'll cheers or no oh, cheers, four, could he have made score. that big an impression in a week? Excuse me, ma'am, do you know who Doug Smith is? Yes, I do, and I think he's marvelous. Thank you. Isn't he the new hockey player? Sure I do. He's, he's a fabulous uh, hockey player. Yeah, he's a great hockey player. Do you know who Doug Smith is? Sure, he's the guy with the Sabres. 
Any other Doug Smith you ever heard of? No. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know who yeah. Doug Smith is? Yeah, funny you should ask. He's the best athlete in Buffalo and the best thing about Buffalo. But does he look like this? No, he's better looking. He couldn't be, could he? Hey, Doug, wait for me! Too late. Doug Smith, News 4, left out at the odd. But which one? Doug meets, meets his match, I guess. <laughs> he's only 5'7", I didn't know that. I have to... I don't Keep know. Going. I'm trying. It's all I'm, yours. Trying. I, I'm so tired. That's News 4 and 6, <laughs> produced by Karen Sachs and directed by Tony Badalana. We will be back with an update.